Hello and welcome back to my blog. We're just kind of having some fun here for a day or two. I'm reading again from Grandpa's book, The Old School Master's Reflections. I don't know if there's enough light. I've tried this before. It's the waning of the daylight here. That's the old school master. And uh, I don't know if you could see that because I don't have a way to see what I'm showing there. So. This one is about Hank Roby, the auctioneer. Back in the days when our hearts were young and gay, and so many things in this great, wide, beautiful, wonderful world had not been explored yet, one of the most outstanding heroes in my young life was an auctioneer. I have seen and heard lots of famous auctioneers since those faraway days, but none can compare with the majesty of Hank Roby. More than six feet tall in his socks, he weighed well over 200 pounds. He was just paunchy enough to display properly the most fantastic vest I had ever laid eyes on. He was all bone and muscle, and a more handsome hunk of man never twirled a cane. His professional costume consisted of striped pants, cutaway coat, stovepipe hat, and a beautiful cane he could hook over his arm in a most tantalizing manner. All these items helped to set him apart from the crowd, but that vest just simply made him unique. It was a very colored, double-breasted plaid affair with shiny pearl buttons. When he threw out his chest and cocked that top hat a little to one side, he could have sold the other side of the moon to a Scotchman. Lots of men had handlebar mustaches in those days, but his was brilliant in design, color, and texture. He spent more time trimming, washing, curling, and primping that hirsute adornment than the vainest woman in the neighborhood took for her primping. At least, that is what all the women said. Even though they were a little catty about it, I forgave them and continued to worship him at every opportunity. He had a deep, resonant voice that could easily carry over the noise of cackling chickens, bellowing cows, and squealing pigs. When he started a farm sale, he would get up on a hay ladder wagon, which became, for me, a throne of purple velvet trimmed with gold cloth. His very presence demanded respect and quiet. When he started his rigmarole, I stood entranced, even though I had no idea what he was saying. When he pointed his cane at someone and fixed them with those fixed him with those flashing black eyes, the poor fellow would nod yes, even if he were not at all interested in making a bid on that old worn-out corn plow. He simply hypnotized his victims. He was in such demand that people booked him months in advance. If he was busy on the day you wanted your sale, then you changed the date. Lots of people attended sales just to see and hear him, and if they got too close to him, they bought something too. Pa used to hang around the edge of the crowd. He and Hank were good friends, and during a lull in the proceedings, they would swap fish stories. But when Hank got in high gear again, Pa would drift away to the edge. He never trusted himself up in the front ranks. My brother and I were simply fascinated with Hank's antics, so Pa always took us along to all the sales he could make. I suspect there was another reason, too. In those days, they had free lunches at all big farm sales. That took care of a couple meals for us. Pa never would have accepted charity of any kind, and he taught us that principle so well we hardly ate anything at these free lunches. I was so backward anyway, I could not take full advantage of it. By the time I lost some of that shyness, the days of free lunches were gone. We had heard that Hank practiced his stuff back in the woods. My brother, next to me, decided he was going to be an auctioneer just like Hank someday. So we would go back to the woods, and he would practice on me. I was never impressed very much, but that was my fault, I guess. In later years, he developed into another Hank Roby. He wore the same kind of flashy clothes. He had the same kind of deep, resonant voice. He was big and tall, and he hypnotized with his voice, his cane, and his general appearance. For years, he was as busy as Hank ever was in his prime. He copied all of Hank's fine qualities and his manner of conducting a sale. Farmers looked up to him with respect. He was known as Doc. Anything that Doc did or said was all right and gospel. A public sale with an auctioneer like Hank or Doc was one of the most exciting experiences that ever came into the life of a lonely little country kid. And that's that. And there's even a little, not a moral, but uh, teaching in there, because his brother Doc, did you hear, how he copied Hank Roby. And um, if you're going to be successful at something, it's uh, probably best to copy somebody who's already successful at it, I guess. So a few words of wisdom and some fun from Grandpa Sims. Make it a great day, and bye for now.